Hello everyone, my name is Mini Sethi. I hope you all are staying healthy. Today we are going to talk about consumption hypothesis for UGC net and topic for today's video are Keynesian consumption function or we can say the absolute income hypothesis, relative income hypothesis, permanent income hypothesis and life cycle income hypothesis. One by one we discuss about each. First of all, we are going to talk about Keynesian consumption function or we can say the absolute income hypothesis. This hypothesis basically explains how consumers divide their disposable income between consumption and saving. This hypothesis basically explains how consumers divide their disposable income between consumption and saving and disposable income is part of income that remain after paying taxes. And this hypothesis is based on psychological law of consumption function. So what is psychological law of consumption function? According to psychological law of consumption function, as our income increase, no doubt our consumption will also increase. But increase in consumption is smaller than increase in income. Why increase in consumption is smaller than increase in income? Because as our income is increasing, slowly, slowly our all needs are getting fulfilled. For example, now I have purchased mobile, TV, car, etc. That's why if after a certain time period my income is continuous increasing but consumption will increasing increase at small proportion because now I start saving and this is uh, our psychological law of consumption function and this hypothesis is based on psychological law of consumption function. Now we will see equation of Keynesian consumption function C equal to A plus B Y D. Here C is consumption function. A is autonomous consumption. Autonomous consumption means those expenditure that we have to do for survival. Even our disposable income is zero. Autonomous consumption means those expenditure which we have to do for survival. Even our disposable income is zero. For example, expenditure on food. We have to do expenditure on food. Even our disposable income is zero. We can do this expenditure from our past saving or we can take money from loan, uh, loan from someone else. And uh, B is a marginal propensity to consume. Marginal propensity to consume basically tell us change in consumption due to change in income. And formula of calculating marginal propensity to consume is delta C over delta Y. Here delta C is change in consumption, delta Y is change in income. Suppose change in consumption is 80 and change in income is 100. 80 divided by 100 is equal to 0 0.8. The 0 0.8 will be called our marginal propensity to consume. And why it is disposable income? And disposable income is a part of income that remain after paying taxes for doing the saving or consumption. Now we will see diagram. In this diagram on x-axis we have disposable income. Y axis we have consumption and saving. This Y is our uh, income line and this C is our consumption function that is equal to A plus B Y D. We have already discussed about it. E is our initial equilibrium point. At this equilibrium point you can see our income is O Y 0 and consumption is O C 0. Now suppose our income increase from O Y 0 to O Y 1. As income increase, consumption will also increase. Our consumption increase from OC, OC0 to OC1. C0, C1 is change in consumption. Y0, Y1 is change in income. Here you can see Y0, Y1 is more than C0, C1. That means change in income is more than change in consumption. Means uh, as income increase, no doubt consumption is also increased. But increase in consumption is smaller than increase in income. But why? Because this hypothesis is completely based on psychological law of consumption. And according to psychological law of consumption, as our income increase, no doubt consumption will also increase. But increase in consumption is smaller than increase in income. Now we are going to talk about relative income hypothesis. This hypothesis is given by James Deuce and Berry. According to this hypothesis, people don't care about their absolute well-being. They mainly care about their relative well-being. According to this hypothesis, people don't care about their absolute well-being. They mainly care about their relative well-being. What does this mean? Means, according to this hypothesis, people don't consume to satisfy their own need. They mainly consume so that they can show off in front of society. 
Now with the help of one example, we will clearly understand this hypothesis. According to this hypothesis, people don't consume to satisfy their own needs. They mainly consume so that they can show off in front of society. Means they want to maintain their standard of living equal to other people in their society. Even they are not earning equal to them. If income of all individual will increase at the same proportion, then obviously their relative income will remain same. Please listen carefully. If income of all individual in society will increase at same proportion, then obviously their relative income will not change. For example, there are two individuals in society A and B. Income of A is 10,000. Income of B is 20,000. Income of A is half of income of B. Now suppose income of A increased from 10 to 20,000 and income of B also increased from 20 to 40,000. No doubt absolute income of A has increased from 10 to 20,000 but still his relative income is same and still his income is half of income of B because income of B also increased from 20 to 40,000. That's why we can say that still his relative income is same. Still his income half of B. So in this uh, situation, can A reduce his uh, consumption? As we earlier discussed, according to uh, Keynesian consumption function, as our income increase, consumption increase smaller than income. But in such a circumstances, income of A has increased, but can he reduce his consumption? No. He cannot reduce his consumption because he has to maintain his standard of living equal to B. That's why he has to consume equal to B. He cannot reduce his consumption. His consumption will remain constant as his income will increase. So consumption of A will not reduce. It will remain constant as his income increase. If consumption remain constant, that means APC will also remain constant. APC means average propensity to consume, which mainly tell us percentage of income which we spend on consumption. So if consumption remain constant, that means average propensity to consume will remain constant. Now we will see diagram. In this diagram on x-axis, we have disposable income. And y-axis, we have consumption and saving. This OY, this one is our income line, this one. And C, C is our short-run consumption curve. Here we assume only two individuals in society, A and B. And income of, initial income of A is O, Y1. At this income, A is consuming A, Y1. And initial income of B is O, Y2. At this income, B is consuming B, Y2. Now suppose income of A has increased from O, Y1 to O, Y2. Now income of A is O, Y2. And income of B also increased from O, Y2 to O, Y3. Means now income of B is O, Y3. According to this consumption function, as increased income, A should consume uh, B, Y2. But a is consuming A1, Y2 means A is consuming this part more, this part more A1, uh, B1 means according to A needs, A should consume B, Y2 but for show of in society, uh, A is consuming A1, Y2, A, A is consuming A1, uh, B, this part more so that he can do show of in front of B, uh, B is his neighbor. A uh, similar uh, B income of B is O Y3. According to this consumption function, B should consume C Y3, but B is consuming B1 Y3. This part B1 C part B is consuming more because he is also imitating someone else which income is higher than B. Uh, that's why because of show of people are consuming more and this is relative income hypothesis people don't consume for their absolute needs they consume so that they can do show off in front of society and uh, this dotted line shows constant a apc of a and this dotted line shows a constant apc of b and when we join both these points we will get new uh, consumption curve which is c1 c1 now we are going to talk about permanent income hypothesis. This hypothesis is given by Nobel Prize winner economist Milton Friedman. According to this hypothesis, our consumption depends on our permanent income. 
according to this hypothesis our consumption depend on our permanent income what is permanent income permanent income is long run expected average income permanent income is long run expected average income for example you are very experienced person you are working from so many years you have particular kind of skill based on this you are sure wherever you go you can earn average 20000 rupees per month this is your long run expected average income and this will be called your permanent income on the other hand transitory income is part of income that people don't expect they will receive in future this is short time period income for example you win lottery or in this month your performance was very good that's why you got some incentive this income you don't expect you will receive in future that's why this will be called your transitory income according to this hypothesis our consumption depend on our permanent permanent income not on transitory income milton friedman divide income and consumption into two parts y equal to yp plus yt y is total income yp is permanent income yt is transitory income we have already discussed about permanent income and transitory income similar c is equal to cp plus ct c is our consumption total consumption cp is permanent consumption and ct is a transitory consumption permanent consumption means our normally consumption which expenditure we normally do and uh, ct is transitory consumption which we do during the time of uh, emergency means uh, ct means uh, those expenditure which we do during the time of emergency for example someone diagnosed with a disease and uh, he has to bear uh, so much expenditure in hospital and our uh, permanent income and permanent consumption are connected with each other but there is no relation between transitory income and transitory consumption you cannot say that na you will only go to doctor if you receive some incentive or you will win lottery according to this hypothesis at short time period our mpc is less than apc as we know apc mainly tell us percentage of income we consume and mpc mainly tell us a change in consumption due to change in income at short time period according to this hypothesis mpc is less than apc that means at short time period we do less expenditure but why at short time period we consume less because at short time period we treat our income as a transitory income not permanent income for example recently you got a job you don't know your job is stable or not that's why you will not treat this income as a permanent income you will treat this income as a transitory income that's why your mpc is less than apc means you will do less expenditure on the other hand at long time period your mpc increase and become equal to apc that means your expenditure will increase because at long time period you become very experienced person you have particular kind of skill you will treat your income as a permanent income that's why you will increase your expenditure as a result your mpc will increase and become equal to apc now we will see equation cp equal to kyp cp is permanent consumption k is proportion of income that we consume and k is equal to apc and mpc as we earlier discussed at long time period mpc is equal to apc and yp is permanent income now we will say diagram in this diagram on x axis we have income and y axis we have consumption here you can see this is oc this one is long run consumption function that is equal to kyp cs cs one is short run consumption function t1 is initial equilibrium point and initial equilibrium income is oy now suppose income increase from oy to oy1 if people treat increase in income is transitory income then they will consume e2 y1 on the other hand if they think increase in income is permanent then they will consume e3 y1 you can see e3 y1 is more than e2 y1 that means if people think increase in income is transitory income they will consume less on the other hand if they think increase in income is permanent then they will consume more because during the permanent income they will feel more secure and safe that's why they will consume more next is life cycle hypothesis this hypothesis is given by franco modi gilani according to this hypothesis people want to maintain their consumption level same throughout their life according to this hypothesis people want to maintain their consumption level same throughout their life means they want to consume same throughout their life uh, that's why they save more money in their middle age when their income is very high 
and use this income in their old age when they are not earning. Now we will see a diagram. In this diagram on x axis we have life span and y axis we have income, consumption and saving. We are talking about person A. This CC shows consumption curve of uh, person A and this YY shows income curve of person A. Before the age of 20, person A was not doing any kind of job, means he was not earning money because he was student, he was taking money from his parents or we can say that he was taking educational loans. That's why you can see before 20, his consumption is more than income. You can see consumption curve is above than income curve. That means his consumption is more than his income. If consumption is more than income, that's why this part shows negative saving or we can say this part shows this saving. At the age of 20, he start doing job. That's why you can see after E point, his income is continuous increasing. So here you can see income curve is above than consumption curve. That means income is more than consumption. At this P point, his income is highest. During this time period, he is saving for his retirement and repaying his past loan means repaying his educational loans. And at the age of 60, he got retirement. After that, you can see again his consumption is more than income because he is not earning any money. He is just consuming. That's why consumption is more than income. You can see consumption curve is above than income curve. Means consumption is more than income. If consumption is more than income, that's why this part will show the dis saving. This part will show his negative saving. During this time period, he is using money from his past saving. Or we can say that during this time period, he is using money which he was saved during his middle age. According to this hypothesis, people try to maintain their consumption level same throughout their life. Now, with the help of this example, we will clearly understand how people try to maintain their consumption level same throughout their life. Uh, C is equal to W plus RY over T. Here C is consumption. W is wealth. Here we assume his total wealth equal to 1 lakh. R is remaining years of life or we can say that R is working life of person. He started work means he started job at the age of 20 and he got retirement at the age of 60. 60 minus 20 is equal to 40. 40 will be called working life. And Y is annual income. And here we assume annual income is equal to 40,000. T is remaining years of life. Means how many years he think he will be alive. Uh, suppose he think he will be alive till the age of 70. And he started a job at the age of 20. 70 minus 20 is equal to 50. 50 will be called remaining, remaining years of life. Now we will put all value in this equation. Value of W is 1 lakh. Value of R is 40, value of Y is 40,000, value of T is 50. We will put all these value in this equation and we will solve this equation. After solving this equation, we have 34,000, 34,000 per year. That means in order to maintain their consumption level same throughout their life, a person will consume 34,000 per year. Please listen carefully. In order to maintain their consumption level same throughout their life, a person will consume 34,000 per year according to these data. And uh, in many countries, people actually plan this kind of consumption. So this is all about consumption hypothesis. I think you got it. And thank you so much for watching this video. Bye. Take care.